But here's how you resist the devil. Okay, so the next time you feel tempted, you just go like this. Get off me, devil! And throw that devil off of you. So I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And you say, man, I ain't going to act crazy like that. Well, how bad do you want to be delivered? Do you want it bad enough to say, get off of me, devil? Get the, get the devil out of here. Do you want it bad enough? Because some of y'all going to have to become a crazy Christian. Some of y'all going to have to get crazy for Jesus. And if you ain't willing to, to fight against that devil and to do whatever you have to do to win, ain't nothing nobody can do for you because you have to want it. You have to be called out of this world. You have to be saying, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Pick up your cross daily and follow him. And he even said, Jesus said, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it in the fire. Now, if he said that about sin, he was pretty serious about it. If you're going to even lose your hands or your feet for Jesus. So I'm just saying, God is real. God loves you. But you got to learn to resist the devil. So next time the devil attacks you, you got to just say, cut off on me. In the name of Jesus. And that's what it means to resist the devil. The least you could do is say, In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus. All right, there's power in it. You may not believe it, but to shake your hands and to swing your arms and to say, Get off of me, devil. There's power in that. You know why? Because I do it, and it works. The minute I start thinking something I shouldn't think, I say, get off of me. And that devil runs away from me. He ain't coming back because he knows I'm serious. I'm so serious that I'm willing to look stupid for Jesus. Why do you think I wear this stuff, man? Somebody I ain't never seen my eyes before. Hmm. All right, God is real. That's the word. Okay? Resist the devil. Then he will flee from you. He ain't going to flee from you before you resist him. And God is testing you to see how serious you are. Because some people are going to lie to God. Oh, God. I really wish. I really wish I was delivered. Oh, Jesus. I really wish I didn't struggle with this sin. Man, shut up. Shut up. Instead of saying, oh, Please forgive me, God. Help me to resist. And then you walk right into your sin. Why not do this? In the name of Jesus, I break your power. Don't get off of me. In the name of Jesus. You got to learn to cast the devil out of yourself. And here's the good news. Once you learn how to cast the devil out of yourself, God will use you to cast devils out of other people. And he'll put you in the ministry. And he'll use you. And he'll send you all over the world. And you'll be used to God. And you'll be a mighty man of God. And you will have prosperity. And people will come to you just to ask you to pray for them. But you got to learn to fight the fight and win the battle. If you can't win the battle over your own life, God can never use you to win the battle for someone else. I promise you there's people right now, if I could just lay my hands on you, I'd just, in the name of Jesus, come out. And you'd be like, nah, nah. And, and, and you would get delivered. But the problem is, you'd only get delivered temporarily. See, because that devil might come out because I said so. And all he's going to do is wait for you. At, at, he's just going to walk down the street, walk around the block. As soon as I'm gone, 
that devil's gonna come right back and get you. That's why you gotta learn how to fight the devil yourself. You gotta learn to resist the devil yourself. You gotta learn to fight that fight and get your victory yourself. Because even, even Moses and Elijah himself could come and lay hands on you in prayer. And it would only be temporary. You might have a high, you might be filled with the Holy Spirit for a couple of days and be strong against the, the enemy for a couple of days. But until you learn how to fight the fight yourself, any type of deliverance is only going to be temporary. Okay, so it's time to resist the devil. It's time to get excited about God. It's time to be, listen, I'm, I'm proud to be a crazy Christian. Because if somebody accused me of being crazy, I'll be able to say, at least I'm crazy for Jesus. What are you crazy for? Because there's some suckers out there who will go to a basketball game or a football game or a hockey game and they'll paint their face and they'll get in the crowd and they're like, ah! And they're crazy for something of the world. At least I'm crazy for someone who saved me. And you know it's so crazy because... Because two, three years ago, you were, there's some people you were crazy for one team. Oh, I just love the Buccaneers. Oh, my, the Buccaneers are playing. Ah, you're going to paint your face Buccaneers. You're going to write Buccaneers all over you. Two years later, oh, I just love the lightning bolts. Oh, the, the lightning bolts are the greatest. Man, you stupid. Get excited about Jesus. Get excited about God. That's idolatry. Going to stay home from church so you can watch the game. That is idolatry. It's just as bad as pornography. Because it's something you're putting before God. You ain't even excited about God. And because of that, you're lukewarm. It's time to put God first and stop being a fool. If you're going to be a fool, be a fool for Jesus. The Bible even says we're supposed to be fools for him. And it doesn't matter if people don't believe in God, people around you. Because if you got Jesus, nothing else should matter. All right, so that's it. God loves you.